good evening today we are going to have another lecture on the series of soul curry before understanding about the soul we should try to understand what the soul does with our body and what is the what is the purpose of life the purpose of life without going into details of individual lives we understand that everybody wants peace of mind the happiness and blissfulness in their lives are we getting these virtues in our lives answer is no because we are in search of these virtues in our life but practically speaking whenever we go behind these virtues we get temporarily why this happens we will try to understand why this happens only then we can come to a conclusion and we can alleviate those problems now we should understand that this body which has been given to us from the almighty god is one of the finest computer ever made on this universe and this computer is unique in nature and has got so many fine connections within the body in from one organ to another organ and all this is running by a very sophisticated software that is known as the energy force which is flowing inside our body including the consciousness there is not pure electromagnetic current but it is having a special feature of a consciousness which flows in each and every organ of this body at a cellular level we have got this wonderful gift from the almighty god but we are not aware of the function of the these things in detail and that is why we are not able to operate this operating system of our computer in a perfect manner that's why we are suffering with so many things nobody has taught how to invent our software and how to take best output from this software now the recipe which has been made today is of the soul curry curry means what all those ingredients which are mixed uh, in the soul and then it becomes a curry and which is the most important recipe of our life soul is a energy which flows inside of the human body in each and every organ at a cellular level human body is composed of 37.2 trillion neurons and that that use the chemical and electromagnetic energy uh, to maintain the homeostasis of this life the electromagnetic current which flows throughout the body is through 135 billion neurons in in the central nervous system and more than 120 million neurons in the rest of the body and these neurons these waves can be recorded in terms of ecg eeg emg and body is just an effect of that energy and it is alive till the time the energy is flowing inside the body once this energy goes away from the body then this body becomes inert dead and we cannot even keep it for even 24 hours and that is the real quality of the soul that keeps this body alive these bodies have various genders male female and many more but the soul has got no gender it is a tiny metaphysical conscious point of spiritual light of a consciousness of the powers and virtues and each and every soul soul is a unique soul life exists as a result of the union of the soul and the body the soul enters the mother's womb uh, at the time of the formation of zygote and then when the soul enters into the zygote then after only the organogenesis takes place and the body grows until unless the soul enters into the body the zygote never grows the process includes the creation of the brain heart uh, and other other various uh, or organs in the body the organs of the body are controlled by the soul through the faculty of the brain the soul is not a physical light but a light of conscious energy the fundamental being of our own self human body is made up of two parts one is the humus and the other is the being the humus is a greek word meaning thereby the soil which includes the soil water fire air and space 
and being is the life, is the soul. When these together uh, come together, then only the human being comes into action. Where is this soul resides? Soul resides in the at the junction of the hypothalamus and pituitary body at the form, point of reticular formation and it is the pacemaker of this body from where the energy electromagnetic current energy with the consciousness goes into each and every organ of the body at a, a cellular level the pituitary is connected to the hypothalamus and every energy is coming from there and is spreading uh, throughout the body the sitting of this seat the soul controls the nervous system the various organs in the body through neurotransmitters, nervous systems and, and various, various chemical hormones in the nervous system. The brain is the machine by means of which the soul thinks, remember, receives and sends messages to the physical organ through the, through the neurotransmitters, ner uh, nervous systems and hormones. Apart from the physical sensations, the soul experiences pleasure, pain, happiness, sorrow through the brain. The aging takes place only to the body. The aging doesn't take place in the soul. And when the age of any equipment is complete, for example, car has got an age of 10-15 years. Thereafter, it, it, it goes away. It is not of any use. In the same manner, this physical body has got a limited uh, age. Thereafter, this is destroyed and the, and the soul comes out of the body and it becomes dead. Soul doesn't have any aging. It is, it remains of the same age throughout. The intrinsic nature of the soul is, a, is of the peace, love, truth, bliss and purity. All power lies in the uh, purity of the soul. When we become impure, we lose our inner unlimited power. Now what are the various virtues and powers of the soul? These virtues and the power are the integral part of the soul. Till that time it is there in the soul, in a 100% capacity, we perform the optimum. When the power and, uh, and the virtues goes down, then it, it is, it, we are not able to perform perfectly. The seven virtues which we have inherited from our Supreme Soul, God, they are purity, peace, love, joy, bliss and the power and the knowledge. What is purity? Purity is sometimes misnomer. This we many times call it celibacy. Celibacy is not the uh, total purity. Purity is of the total body. And in, when the soul is absolutely pure, then there is no uh, consideration of the body. It is purest form of the body and it, it, it thinks about the, in, in the soul conscious. Purity in true sense means the absence of any impurity, thus making soul 100% soul conscious and not the body conscious. Thoughts are the creation of our mind. So if thoughts are pure, words we speak will also be righteous. So the subjects of being holy with the physical body is called the Brahmachara. When, the, when we are pure from the body only, then we call it Brahmachara. But when we pure by the soul altogether, then we call it Brahmachari. Brahmachari means we are inclined and connected with the Brahma. The soul is a point of conscious life with the seven virtues and eight powers. The foremost virtue is the peace. We all human beings need peace all the time. It is the garland of our neck. Every human being urges for the peace in the life. But from where, how to get the peace? We have lost the art of living because we are either living in the past or we are, we are living in the future but not in the present. And life is only in the present. If we think about the past, it is all the deeds which people have done with us or we, I have done with somebody, they result into to regrets. And the regret, the end result of the regret is dukkha. But whenever we think about the future, it is always we are not in, in the proper, don't know the, how to live properly. That is why we always remain in fear. So either we think in the positive or think in the future. When we think in the past, then, then it is, it is the, it, these are the regrets. And whenever we think in the future, these are the sorrow, these are, these are the fear. So we are living in sadness or in the fear. But the life is only in the present. 
So we should know how to live with the person so that we can live a happy life. What are the reasons behind that we have lost these virtues? Now we can 100% say that all the population of 100 crore people around the world, they are not having these 7 virtues and 8 powers in totality. Very limited uh, virtues are there. What is the reason behind it? When it has been studied, it has been found that the nervous system where we, this soul resides, the neurons which are there in the nervous system, 97% neurons are inert. They are not functional. They are not working. Only 3% neurons are active. And these 3% neurons, they carry these virtues in them. And because of this reason, we are not getting the, all those good uh, uh, feelings, the peace, happiness and blissfulness in our life. Now once we are not able to get it and nobody has taught, taught us how to get them, we can get these virtues only when in uh, one situation when we go inside ourselves. But the soul has a tendency to get these virtues. Soul wants peace, soul, soul wants happiness, soul, soul wants blissfulness. Then it searches in the external environment. It tries to find out peace from the other people, love from the other persons, love from the situation, love from the society or love from the materialistic world. But all those places and people, when we try to find out, they are also deficient of these virtues. They, they, when they are deficient, how can they provide to us? In that way, we remain all the time seeker of love, seeker of happiness, seeker of the pleasure. But we don't get it. That's why we are concentrated on the, on the, on the focusing the external environment. That's how the body consciousness comes in. Body consciousness has got only one thing in common. That it has got a craving, lust for ourselves. We want everything for myself only. Hum sab kuch apne liye chahte hai. Pura apne liye chahiye aur apne ke liye chahiye. If somebody else gets it, then we develop jealousy, hatred, anger, ego. These are the virtues of the body. And these are in full bloom at the present moment. And these are the properties which is causing all the, uh, all the problems and all the uh, difficulties in the lives of ourselves in day to day life. We have discussed that peace is the property of the soul. When we are not able to get the peace in, in and around, we don't know how to go inside and in and around everywhere, we are not getting the peace, then we go into different direction. We try to find out the peace in the in any types of uh, uh, liquors, any type of alcohols, and any types of drugs. And this in this way, we don't get even peace. We just, the, the sensations, they are, they are inhibited. And we go into slight mental depression and ultimately we feel for some time there is a pleasure but ultimately it results into reaction and ultimately agitation and in turn the person is entrapped in the addiction also. And that's how he is not able to understand come out of this thing and, it, 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 and for the search which he was trying to find out in his environment. The answer to this is that we have to become soul conscious instead of becoming the body conscious. Love. True love. True eternal love. Sat Nishwarth Prem. Love is the feeling which is for without unconditional, without any reasoning. When we love to anybody, any individual, any plant, any animal, anything, any flower, then it is unconditional. Love is said the universal phenomena of God. God is love and love is God. And love with the supreme soul, with all the souls, we love some, something that appears to us or is similar to us. It is the energy that flows from us naturally. It is, li it is a light that enlightens those who receives and gives it. It, it is the wonderful power in the, in the universe. One of the famous scientists, we all of us have uh, heard about him, that is Albert Einstein, who is quoted as one of the letters that he uh, wrote to his daughter at the end, at the fake end of his life, that the love is the an extremely powerful universal force 
a variable that we are ignoring for a too long. And the question of the energy to heal the world can be obtained through energy which can heal the humanity that can be obtained by love multiplied by speed of light uh, square. He has made this equation at the end of the, his life uh, when he has discovered the E is equal to mc square which was the uh, which was the basic principle of development of the atomic bomb. And ultimately he said the anything which can heal this humanity is the love. And in a lighter way he, he mentioned that if we could make a bomb of love and which can be thrown all over the world and the hatred can be removed. The J. Robert Oppenheimer who has made this uh, atomic bomb, first atomic bomb which was uh, uh, thrown on the Hiroshima. When he saw this thing at the time of bombing the Hiroshima, he became so afraid, he said that what has been created by human beings, it will destroy the whole, whole world. And, and that was not the need of the uh, need of the human beings. But anyhow, it was made. And today, there are more than sixteen thousand atomic bombs. They are lying on this earth in a different capacity. They are declared, and and the number of bombs, atomic bombs, are much more than this in in the whole world. And these bombs cannot help the humanity. They can destroy this wonderful, beautiful world, but they cannot give anything to the, this, this universe. Both of them ultimately consensually agreed that we cannot help the humanity uh, by devastation but the humanity can be saved and enriched by most power energy in the universe that is love. Love can be extended to any length and it can reach anybody who is having the love in his heart can reach up to the God. Love is God. Therefore, we should understand the meaning of love, the essence of love and we should develop this property in our heart through unconditional love. Love doesn't demand anything from anyone. Nowadays, unfortunately, the meaning of love has also changed. Love doesn't have any gender. As uh, I already discussed, the soul doesn't have any gender. Now, love for a male to female is not a love. It is attraction. It is a physical attraction and for that we mention it is love, it is not that and it is it is really a, a bad quality of a love which we mention for any particular individual uh, in a body consciousness. When I proposed the theory of relativity, very few understood me and what I will reveal now to transmit to mankind will also collide with the misunderstanding and prejudice in the world. There is an extremely powerful force that, so far, science has not found a formal explanation to. It is a force that includes and governs all others, and is even behind any phenomenon operating in the universe, and has not yet been identified by us. This universal force is love. When scientists looked for a unified theory of the universe, they forgot the most powerful unseen force. Love is light that enlightens those who give and receive it. Love is gravity because it makes some people feel attracted to others. Love is power because it multiplies the best we have and allows humanity not to be extinguished in their blind selfishness. Love unfolds and reveals. For love we live and die. Love is God and God is love. This force explains everything and gives meaning to life. This is the variable that we have ignored for too long. Maybe because we are afraid of love, because it's the only energy in the universe that man has not learned to drive at will. To give visibility to love, I made a simple substitution in my most famous equation. If instead of E equals M C square, we accept that the energy to heal the world can be obtained through love, 
multiplied by the speed of light squared. We arrive at the conclusion that love is the most powerful force there is because it has no limits. After the failure of humanity in the use and control of the other forces of the universe that have turned against us, it is urgent that we nourish ourselves with another kind of energy. If we want our species to survive, if we are to find meaning in life, if we want to save the world and every sentient being that inhabits it, love is the one and only answer. Perhaps we are not yet ready to make a bomb of love, a device powerful enough to entirely destroy the hate, selfishness and greed that devastates the planet. However, each individual carries within them a small but powerful generator of love whose energy is waiting to be released. When we learn to give and receive this universal energy, we will have affirmed that love conquers all, is able to transcend everything and anything because love is the quintessence of life. I deeply regret not having been able to express what is in my heart, which has been quietly beating for you all my life. Maybe it's too late to apologize, but as time is relative, I need to tell you that I love you. And thanks to you, I have reached the ultimate answer. Your father, Albert Einstein. And I do feel we are being called by life to create this bomb of love that devastates hatred and that it is the ultimate answer for our species to survive. And I pray that you will share this on Facebook, on YouTube with loved ones, and maybe listen to it every day. For the greatest of these is love. of the soul. Joy is a feeling of self-contentment. So are we happy by getting anything? Are we happy? If one is feeling peaceful and loveful, it will be said that he is happy as well. The happiness is nothing but a natural feeling also when there is a peace and harmonious relationship in our life. There is a deeper joy or joy of our existence. Whenever we are self-contented, when we feel satisfied, in whatever we are having with us, then only we feel we feel joy. And if it, we are not self-contented, then we can never feel a joy. Joy, joy is a limit. Is not a li limited thing. It is a limitless thing. Bliss. It is another extended way of joy. Bliss is a supreme st stage of happiness. It is an eternal happiness which cannot be sen sensed by five senses of our body. For example, if we do some good deed for someone who is unrelated to us, you feel happiness. And like when you, suppose you are treating a patient, and patient becomes alright, then the twinkle in the eye of the patients and the attendants, that is so gratifying, that you cannot uh, get this feeling by any sensory organ. And that is the state of bliss. So bliss, bliss is uh, the another stage beyond joyfulness. And nowadays, with so much greed and lust, we have forgotten to uh, enjoy the blissfulness. The core obstacle to attain bliss is expectation. We always expect something. Suppose we do something good for uh, somebody or some patient or some, uh, some colleague or some friend. Then we are expecting, oh, I did something good for that and today he is not responding for that. That is the reason that we are not blissful. 
everyone is an individual soul with a certain past life baggage and everyone is born alone playing a role in this drama on this stage of world and the soul and the only constant with us is God and so to have a glance of a stage of bliss one should surrender his intellect to the God and have all the relationship with him alone this is a wonderful place where we are playing an actor, the role of an actor in this drama and this drama is based on the resultant of our deeds in the past, in the past lives or in the present life. The ultimate resultant of that is the present stage. So whatever is happening with us, this is all because of my own deeds, whether it is good or it is bad. But whenever the good thing happens, we feel I have done it, I have performed it. But when the bad thing comes to us, we feel that it is because of that person or this person or this situation or that situation. It is not like this. Everything is a resultant of our own deeds. We should remember it so that we will not uh, point, point our finger to anybody, anybody or to any situation. This is the most important to be uh, satisfied so that we lose the expectation, knowledge. Actually, knowledge and the education, these two things are mixed together. In education, we get information. So many people, they have studied, they have learned, they have done the research and it is published or it is written in the books and we get it. This is useful for our teaching. But this is not the knowledge. Knowledge is entirely different. Knowledge is that uh, it's, knowledge is that we are the soul and we are created by our almighty creator, supreme soul, supreme God. This relationship is the knowledge. If you understand that we are not the body, we are the soul and our all the relations are with the supreme soul. This is a permanent, this was there in the past life, this is there now and this will remain in the future as well. But all those people to whom you are meeting in your day to day life, they are your your fellow passengers like in the train. You are meeting them and, and they are ultimately leaving their stations as per their destinies and we also leave this body as per our own destiny, destiny and past karma results. But we don't know, that is why we blame others. There are eight powers. When we achieve all these things, all these virtues, then we get eight powers of the soul. And these powers, they help us in performing our day-to-day -day activities. Because we don't know virtues, that's why we don't know about the powers as well. These powers are how they come to us. These powers, they come, first of all, the peace of mind. What is the peace of mind? When the peace of mind, how it comes? It is a thought which comes in our mind. Thought is transferred from one neuron to another neuron. Passes with a very fast speed. The speed of the neuron is 1 is to 10,000 per second. And it passes to another, not only one neuron, but passes to 10,000 neurons. Then ultimately, it again passes to 10,000 neurons in 1 upon 10,000 second. This is the fastest speed ever seen. And then these thoughts, they transfer like this. Then the whole, the total brain and mind, everything is occupied with their thought and most of the time the thoughts are evil thoughts. They are of the jealousy, their hatred, anger, ego. All these thoughts are there and they spread in the whole of the mind, whole of the brain. And ultimately there is a clouding in the in the mind and we are not able to differentiate the reality between the unreality. And we are not able to discriminate. The power of discrimination comes when there is a peace is there. And when there is a power of discrimination, then power of decision comes. Then you can decide, make a decision, this is correct, this is wrong. And once you understand the drama of this uh, universe, that you are, you are an actor, you are not the final person, then the power of tolerance comes. Then the power of power to face that situation comes. Then whatever has come is all because of my deeds, then we can face it, we have to face it. And even then, even the situation is not, uh, not uh, in your favor, even then you have to thank God to give this power to face that situation and come out as a winner. And then uh, if you are a soul conscious, then you treat every soul as your own uh, a fellow brother.
when you treat everybody as a fellow brother, then the power of cooperation comes in. And then when you detach from the whole world, you feel that we have, I have come here just to play my role and I have to leave this world after completing my role, then the power to withdraw comes. You can withdraw from the whole world and you can go to your almighty with a satisfied manner. Why we are not able to get these virtues and power which are our own properties? This is because of simple reason that we have not learned how to go inside ourselves. How to get these virtues from within. And that's why we try to find out these things from external world. And when we are search of these, these, these virtues from the external world, then the body consciousness. And whenever the body consciousness will be there, there will be attachment with the body and all the evil things which are attached with this body will come there and will create all the disturbances in your life. Now, being a doctor, we should understand what is the definition of the health and, and accordingly we should act upon. Why we call it that these are the virtues of soul, these are not the virtues of the body? Is there any, any way by which we can confirm it? Yes, we can confirm it. Because whenever we remain with these seven qualities and eight powers with, with, within us, which is which comes after after these, these virtues, then we remain healthy physically as well as mentally. That means they, it confirms this, these are the virtues of the soul which are important to keep us healthy. WHO has defined the health that health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. It is not merely absence of any disease. Until unless we are physically, mentally and socially, we are not satisfied, we cannot remain healthy. But recently we have found that these three things cannot make health person healthy. Then the, the WHO has included the emotional and if spiritual well-being to the definition. Until unless you are emotionally and spiritually uh, well, you cannot remain healthy. We should know, we are emotional people, we should know how to handle our emotions and thoughts in a perfect manner. If we know how to handle them, only then we can remain happy and healthy. This body is very fascinating. It is very finely intermingled with each and every organ. The every organ sends messages to other organ. They talk to each other. Every cell talk to each other. How they talk nicely, it has it has not been taught properly in our medicine in, in our medical books. And uh, now recently, the scientists have gone with a special camera inside the body and have recorded life situations how the things are happening, how diseases are developed. There is a temporary state of the living cell in conflict with the environmental changes and trying to cope with them and survive. And when this understanding is imbalanced, then the disease appears. And how it appears? There is a nervous system, there is a hormonal system and there is a neurotransmitter system. In broad way, I will try to explain you that whenever there are evil thoughts that we call negative thoughts and there are positive thoughts which we call as a uh, soul conscious thoughts. Whenever there are negative thoughts like anger, hatred, ego, jealousy, uh, in all these situations, the parasympathetic system is stimulated. Sympathetic system is inhibited. The hormonal, the glands, hormonal glands, they are secre uh, secreting the hormones in a inverse relationship. And neurotransmitters which are inhibitory in nature, they are inhibited and which are excitatory in nature, they are released and that's how they are abnormally affect the organs. For example, if there is a sympathetic system stimulation, I can just give you a simple example, then the heart rate increases, respiratory rate increases, pulse rate increases and, and all the things inside the chemical reaction taking place inside the organ at a cellular level is abnormal and the cell is not able to cope with these uh, precipitating factors and becomes disease. I will explain you later how this happens. The sympathetic overactivity, it releases the stress hormones and vicious cycles of the mental and physical disease and weaker inner strength. 
when the inner strength is weak the person is not able to cope with the surrounding environment then ultimately these persons they land up into suicide uh, suicidal tendency addiction and conflicts among each other it will be between the doctors and paramedics it will be between the doctors and the doctors it will be between the, uh, the do uh, doctors and the patient so today you are seeing that the relationship of this these uh, medical personnel is going bad day, every day the conflict in the health arena is growing concern is well recognized for the doctors in the training there is evidence that many conflicts remain unsatisfactorily uh, resolved or unresolved and result in ongoing issues for the staff morale in a study that sought to identify the range of works related conflicts experienced by uh, doctors uh, disagreements between the residents and attending physicians patients and families and other resi residents were cited as an important area of concern and because of the major virtues of the soul have decreased to 3% the, uh, the, there are increased phases of fights alcohol intake smoking drugs especially among among the doctors we must increase the virtues to live a blissful peaceful and happy life we must stop uh, finding this bliss from outside because it is all temporary we can get little happiness from getting things small things but that that happiness is temporary suppose you are interested to get something good for yourself for example you want to buy a car you want to have a car wonderful car you bought it you got a pleasure for one day next morning you got a problem of petrol you have you got a problem of servicing you have a problem of a uh, driver you have problem of parking you have problem of registration you have problem of insurance there are so many problems are uh, uh, rising them meaning thereby the car is not giving you any happiness it is a temporary the happiness is there within so any external factor cannot give you permanent happiness and satisfaction so we must stop finding blissfulness from outside world because it is all temporary addiction is common because we want peace thus we get trapped in addiction of a superficial desire due to loss of wisdom of truth and that's why and and once we go into addiction then there is a addiction liability there is a tolerance the person feels the, the those neurotransmitters which are brain which which are having which develop the craving for those addictions they keep on asking for the addiction every day and night and that's how the person is trapped instead of getting peace and happiness now he is in trapped in addiction and it is difficult to get rid of this problem because he doesn't have any insight the person is doesn't have any insight therefore he is not able to know he is he doesn't know how to come out of this crisis what is stress we every day day and night we call i am stressed and tired and i am not able to understand what should i do the mental state in which internal and external pressure exceeds exceeds the inner strength that is the coping mechanism we have discussed the coping mechanism has reduced to 3% so how can we find out the resolution for the stress that is why we are not able to cope the uh, stress and this is cycle of mental disease and a physical disease the deviation from the ease disease what is disease disease, disease means this is when we develop it this is then it develops a disease leads to the dimension of the negative thoughts negative thoughts emotions and attitude and memories that that's how the negative team is developed in balance between the inner strength and external stress the negative thoughts develop and then extrinsic and intrinsic stress develops and activation of the psychological factors factors like uh, depression hostility isolation type 1 personality and anxiety all these factors they are developed and ultimately patient is in trap in this situation and is not able to cope with the stress and he become restless when we are peaceful pure happy blessed and have good feelings for others then a positive fear team appears and that is the uh, that is the love care unconditional true love and care and uh, uh, with the others and having a positive 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 attitude for the people we all the time we should have a good uh, feelings for the others 
and not only feelings, the action should be good so that the other people can be benefited. The bottom line, very simple equation which has been quoted several times that be good, do good. These two words alone can make you soul conscious rather than body conscious. I will tell you further how to get it done, not by this method. This is the only simplest way of explaining that if you become good for each and everybody whosoever comes in your contact and do good and do whatever is possible good for him, then you, you get all these virtues within yourself. The person to whom you are helping, you are trying to help, he may get the help, he may not the girl get the help. But these virtues you are definitely going to develop by this action. That's why you have to do this action for the benefit of yourself, not for the other. When you start thinking in this way, then you will keep on doing this sort of thing all the time together for yourself. These feelings, they, are, they can be done in three ways. One is the mansa, vacha, karmana. Mansa means whenever we give a thought, the positive thought, thought of a health, thought of a good feeling for the others. And then it comes in the words as I am speaking to you. And then it comes in action. In all these three forms, we should be uh, helpful for, and having good feelings for the others. Out of these three, you will be surprised to know the number one, that is the mansa, when we give positive thought to anybody, this is the most powerful thing. As I have already discussed with you, that the thoughts are the most powerful energy on this universe. Thoughts can create anything. Whatever you think today, tomorrow you will become. And how it happens, it is, it is a miraculous thing. And, and uh, now scientists have tried to understand. Previously, people were not knowing. Here I would like to explain you how these thoughts, they make you more, 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 more powerful. For example, I will give you an example. Suppose one day, somebody thought that uh, this Chandrayaan will go to the moon. It is a thought only, nothing more than that thought. He created all those things, he collected people, many people around him and ultimately he made a project of uh, Chandrayaan and ultimately that Chandrayaan landed into moon. Meaning thereby, the thoughts are the most powerful energy on this earth and if we apply them in, in a proper direction, we can perform anything and, and uh, anything. This not, only, this not only works within the body, it works outside the body also. Thoughts have got a vibration and the vibration, they are immortal. Any energy once produced, it is immortal. It, is, it cannot be destroyed. So this is a powerful energy, it cannot be destroyed. Then ultimately this energy goes outside our body also, outside our brain also. And it flows in the environment and of the same frequency thoughts which are flowing in the environment that person can attract those thoughts and can multiply many foods, many times, it has been described a thousand times and, uh, and, uh, and many literally people have described once aap koi ek vichar karte hai jo is sansar me logo ka bhala kar sakta hai to puri kainat, pura brahmand uski madad karne ke liye saamne a jata hai to is liye we have to create those thoughts in the most possible best possible manner and it has been taught so many times again I will re-emphasize here whatever you want to become whatever you want to attain in your life you should think and write down in front of your eyes and you repeat it again and again then all those helps will come from the environment for, and, and that action will be performed but most of the time because our thinking process has gone negative that's why we don't understand the things positively, we don't go in the positive direction and accordingly we develop negative results. And that is the reason we are, the results are negative. We have to stop thinking negative for the betterment of ourselves, not for the others. And once we stop thinking negative, we can create positivity inside ourselves and we can become healthy, wealthy and wise and happy. I have already discussed this thing. The neuron, the speed of the neurons is very, very fast. Very, very fast. In one second, in, in, in one is to 10,000 seconds, one message from one neuron passes to another neuron and then 
it is not passed to a single neuron, it passes to 10,000 neurons and those 10,000 neurons again passes to 10,000. That means within, within a second time, within a second, that message goes into each and every cell of this whole body, mind and body and that action is performed. Most of the time, what, what are those emotions and thoughts going inside? They are all negative. They are thought, thoughts of jealousy, they are thought of hatred, they are thought, thought of anger, they are, they are thought of ego. And that's how we develop disease. So who is the creator of the diseases? Who is the creator of our mental agonies and physical agonies? We are the creator of our physical and mental agonies. And that is why it is our responsibility to take care of them and to care of ourselves. We are the only healers. Nobody outside the world can heal us. It has been noticed that all the diseases which are developed like diabetes, hypertension, ischemic heart disease and for that matter bacterial and viral disease, they all are because of our negative thoughts. The other factors are precipitating factors. We are emphasizing mainly on precipitating factors. We are not talking about the actual thoughts which are really producing these illnesses and if we control them, then definitely we can control all the diseases. Recently, up to uh, three years back, a Nobel award was given for the development of cancer. It was found that all, all the time we know, we, we all are doctors, we know that we, uh, we are multiplying all the time. Our every cell is multiplying uh, at a different, different speed in different, different part of the body and whenever there is a oxygen deficiency in that particular part, oxygen supply is reduced, then that particular organ develops cancer. And, and these three scientists, they have been given this Nobel award on this in this thing. And how this oxygen supply reduces, that too uh, is, is reduced because of our negative thoughts. Negative thoughts, they develop hypertension, they develop diabetes, they develop dyslipidemia, they develop atherosclerosis and oxygen supply, the, all the organs are there. There are various researches in this regard has been done all over the world, particularly in America. There are various researches that are done how this soul consciousness helps the people. How these virtues, they help the people uh, to maintain their homeostasis, to maintain, their, uh, to keep themselves fit and fine. And they have done uh, uh, one of the research which has been uh, conducted into a true happiness carried out by the Harvard University over 75 years of the period. It's the very longest, one of the longest study. It concluded that the people who surround ourselves uh, with us as well as our acceptance into society can have a positive effect on their physical and mental health and help us to live longer. Happiness, hormones that the body is capable of producing by itself includes dopamine which makes us feel good, serotonin which reduces depression and the endorphin which makes us happy and thus helps to reduce the physical pain. These all hormones, neurotransmitters, they are produced by our body only. It is not from outside and this happens only when we develop these seven virtues. How do we define, uh, define individual happiness? Factors contributing to the happiness can differ from person to person and include brings the things you want to do and having the freedom to choose our own path in life, maintaining positive relationship and being accepted into the society, feeling content with our situation and not comparing yourself unfavorably to others, maintaining a positive attitude and not allowing yourself to be upset or put off by the many changes that occur in life. These keep on change, happen, changes keep on happening in your life, achieving goals that you have set out for yourself and keep positive when trying to achieve them. When you are positive to achieve those goals, as I have already told you, you can attain any goal on this earth is, is created for us by our Supreme Father, Almighty God and they are made to achieve them. But because of our negative thoughts, negative approach, we are not able to achieve them. Keeping fit both mentally and physically, thus reducing the likelihood of developing illness and disease. The longest study into ha happiness ever carried out in the whole world and research into what makes a happy life presented by Robert Wilder from Harvard University took over 75 years to complete and looked at the lives of 724 volunteers as well as their partners and their family members 
bringing the total number of people studied to 2000 after analyzing the data a clear correlation was found between a strong relationship good health and happiness so this all these things we are the creator and we, we can create for ourselves maintaining positive relationship was the was also found to help people slow the aging process and enable them to live longer life there are various ways by which it has been uh, completed out for example exercise uh, partaking and fulfilling activities such as uh, smiling on your face uh, eating chocolates and focus on eating foods that are high in uh, tryptophan and playing with the pets hugging and kissing with loved ones and meditating these are the parameters eight parameters which have been checked in this Harvard study and it was found who senior was inclined in the, in, uh, towards these activities they were more physically and mentally fit ultimately the bottom line is that we have to inculcate those seven virtues in our life and we can become a complete perfect happy man what happens at a cellular level this is very fascinating and we should definitely understand so that we can understand the development of disease whenever we have got a, any thought any emotion then it releases reactive oxygen species ROS or oxidative free radical in the cell the every message goes into the organ from that organ it goes into the cell and at cell level the oxidative free radicals are released and these oxidative free radicals in one second when we are loveful blissful happy helpful for the others then it is less than 60,000 uh, oxidative free radical in one second they can be metabolized by the mitochondria but when we are jealous we are hatred anger ego fights conflicts then these increases from 60,000 to 2 lakhs and mitochondria has capacity to metabolize only 60,000 oxidative free radical meaning thereby the balance of these oxidative free radicals which are the creator of the disease at a cellular level they will remain in the cell and will create the disease that's why knowing this fact now you should feel all the time what I am doing just fighting with anyone or having bad relationship with anyone we are developing this disease process inside ourselves and as a doctor it is our duty not only to understand ourselves but to make people understand that they should be loveful blissful happy and peaceful now you will be surprised to know the immune cells play an important role in our body and these immune cells they are the they are the defense personnel in our body and they engulf all those things which are not good for our health for example they they engulf the bacteria they engulf the virus and they engulf the cancer cells whatever are found they engulf it and destroy them and ultimately they keep us fit but when we have got negative thoughts the number of immune cells they are really really uh, they are reduced drastically i'll give you an example of covid 19 in covid 19 people were fearful so much fearful and because of that they had tremendous development of uh, uh, negative thoughts inside them and the number of these immune cells they were reduced drastically and many of the young people they have died because of this fear only they were not having anything they just got this message that i i have got a covid 19 positive and now i have got a, now i have received a death warrant now I, no one can save me and people have died we all have seen it in this means the immunity has got a very important role in our body i will give you another example the study was done there are two studies done in this regard that most of the snakes who bite us they are not poisonous and those uh, the uh, autopsy was done of those patients who died because of the snake bite it was found there was there was no venom in the body but even then they died they died because of the fear they, because of the fear that I have uh, bitten by a, a snake, a snake, and I have to, I will die. You just try to understand how strong are the result of our own emotions, whatever we think we create. There is another example in this study was done in USA only. 
there was a one patient, a one person who has been given a life sentence, was got death sentence diya gaya tha. So the researchers, they thought that we can do some experiment in this regard. What they did, they took a permission from the government that he is going to die, we can we do a, an experiment, government anyhow allowed. And what experiment was done? It was done, the patient was kept in a dark room. Patient was kept in a dark room and he was told that you are going to die because uh, in America uh, many times the uh, death sentence is given by uh, gunshot injury or sometimes hand. So in, in both the situations, so it is a painful death. He said, we will provide you a death by a snake bite. I don't know very simple, you will die as soon as you get the prick of the snake, you will die. That uh, person also gave the acceptance key, it is better, I am going to die, I have to die uh, uh, with a peaceful death. A dark room was made, he was told, the same voice was created inside room as the, some snake is very poisonous and snake is coming and two simple pricks of uh, given to the patient of the needle which is similar to the teeth of a snake and as soon as that needles they prick the person he died without any delay this is experimentally uh, proof uh, study what does this indicate? A simple emotion can create even death. In the same manner, a simple emotion of blissfulness, of the love, care can create miracles in your life and can make you happy and healthy and wise. Soul has got three parts primarily. One is mind, second is intellect and third is memories. Mind is an energy which is all the time enables the person to think rationally. It works 24 hours, 365 days, even during sleep. And intellect are the old memories which guides them. Intellect are the old memories which guides them as a subconscious memory. And, and memories, they are the audiovisual recording of the information which thoughts uh, over a period of time during this world. If you, if you consider it, then it, it comes from various lives also. Out of these two, the conscious mind is, is a very surprising thing. Conscious mind is only 5%. Subconscious mind is again nearly 5%. And 95% the uh, mind is unconscious mind. And the unconscious mind doesn't hear anything. Self-conscious mind Whatever we have talked today, this all thing has been heard by conscious mind only. The unconscious, subconscious mind is sleeping. And whenever there is a if you see the majority, the subconscious mind and unconscious mind is the majority, 95%. Whenever situation comes or a person comes, your original behavior comes. Suppose you have understood very well that we should be loveful, we should be peaceful, we should be happy, we should be not misbehave with anyone, we, we should be very kind, uh, we should have good feelings for everyone. But whenever anybody comes or any situation comes, your subconscious mind comes at the top and thus in a fraction of second everything wrong which you never thought that you should do it, but you will do it. Suppose somebody is coming, crying and fighting uh, and, and abusing you in your room. But immediately, immediately you start beating him or you, you start crying on him. Not only speak in, in words, but from within also you will be in restless. The meaning thereby, this is not under our control. And that is the biggest problem. That is the biggest problem that we are not able to control our thoughts and emotions which are negative in this life and in many lives before. So for, what is the solution for this? And it has been found that it not only in external environment, in the internal environment does the same thing. You must have heard the name of telomere. Whenever we are positive in thoughts, the telomeres are the end terminal points of the chromosomes. They are the protective in nature and they gives health. And when we are negative, occupied with the negative thoughts, the thickness of the telomere reduces. And when we are in positive thoughts, our personality is changed, then the 
this the thickness of the telomere increases and it helps to make us healthy in the same way you will be surprising fact is this you should be very fascinating fact and all of us should understand we are all the time multiplying all the cells of every organ is multiplying and every day new cells are being formed old cells are destroyed for example the blood is totally changed in 45 days to a new blood the whole old old rbcs are destroyed in the same manner whole body cells are changing and changing and in two years time the whole body is changed all together each and every cell is changed including the bones what a fascinating thing then why we are not curing ourselves because new cells are also formed but the same speed and with the same negative thoughts and therefore if the disease the cells were there again the disease uh, cells are formed and ultimately most of the time it is increasing in intensity our negative thoughts are increasing in intensity that's why at the, uh, at the development of the age we are developing more and more disease rather than curing it but on the other hand if we learn how to live if we learn the art of living we can start learning what should be our innate behavior then it can be changed and we can upregulate the healthy genes and we can downregulate the unhealthy genes which produces the diseases and we can cure it we can cure all together and that cure will be permanent and i would like to show you one of the most important study ever done uh, in, in, in india that is randomized control open heart trial performed at mount abu by brahma kumari's organization and and then it was done with the help of uh, maulana azad medical college kem medical college, mumbai and brahma kumari center and and drdo new delhi the government of india organization with the help of ministry of health and family welfare in 95 and this study was uh, was published in 2012 and there was a regression of the coronary atherosclerosis through healthy lifestyle in coronary artery disease patients mount abu open heart trial it is one of the finest trial ever done multi centric trial and it was done under the control of government of india and uh, the, the main inspiration for this trial was dr apj abdul kalam at that time he was the director of the drdo Uh, who subsequently became the president of india and he was behind this trial and it was found the result of this trial was eye opening miraculous one cannot understand all those patient subjects who developed the who developed the uh, heart attacks ischemic heart diseases some some uh, having 90% blockage some people are having 100% blockage somebody has undergone already angioplasty two times three times somebody have already undergone bypass surgery but all those subjects who have already undergone all these process they have been they have been taken in this in this study and it, it has been found that with three simple things done the lifestyle modification the Uh, that was a healthy lifestyle the food change and the sleep pattern change these three things and with little brisk walk 45 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes uh, in the evening and meditation predominantly 93% of the patients they recovered all together never uh, developed this disease and still they are living healthy and happy life nothing can be better than this study where it has changed everything and in fact this study has changed my mindset as mindset as well and i have started thinking and thereafter i have started doing all these researches and investigations from various literature and found that this is most scientific study scientific research and we should invent ourselves we should understand how to live we should understand the spirituality in ourselves Now, spirituality has become so much missed now. People say that this is an orthodox thing. So somebody, some uh, somebody who, who doesn't know science should practice this spirituality. But actually, spirituality is the real science, which is the science of ourselves. हमारी खुद की साइंस है हम कैसे काम करते हैं इसकी साइंस है इसलिए हमको स्पिरिचुअलिटी को एज ए साइंस एक्सेप्ट करना चाहिए. The other things are much beyond it. लेकिन लेकिन स्पिरिचुअलिटी ही है जो हम हैं दिस द 
the result of the uh, this small dog study decreased anxiety depression anger grief particularly benefits to people with a type a personality healthy behavior reflecting the daily routine like assistance with smoking adherence to diet and exercise and all achieved with success through meditation there is one more thing i will uh, cover today in very short thing that is chrono medicine chrono medicine we have got a biological clock in, in our hypothalamus and that biological clock is attached with the sun actually it is attached with uh, most of the uh, planets but predominantly with uh, sun and our body is accustomed with working with the relationship of the sun and we have forgotten we have not seen it it is a very ancient thing and and it was practiced in our in india since very long thousands years back but recently uh, this albert franz has been given this credit he has coined the term chrono medicine that this he is he is uh, suggested there is a clock and it acts through the sun and what is the main important factor of this clock that we should get up Two and a half hour before the sun sunrise, and eat everything before sunset. Uh, we, we should sleep three hour after the sunset. That is the basic thing. And the in the early morning, what happens? Why we should get up so early in the morning, around three thirty to four o'clock? What happens actually? All the hormones which are released from the hypothalamus and pituitary, they are released at the time of four o'clock to six o'clock. All the insulin and related diabetic hormones they are released at that time. The cortisol is released at four o'clock to eight o'clock, and all the hormones I would not like to cover this time. They all are released at that time. Whenever we sleep at this this time, then what happens? During this time, the sleep pattern is of a beta wave, and beta wave means there is a nightmares. There are nightmares during the sleep, and most of the people they are sleeping at this time. And in that nightmare, what happens? However, we are lying in the bed, but inside our body there is there are nightmares and that are causing sympathetic overdrive, and we develop all those things which normally by the negative thoughts we develop, and those 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 things they precipitate disease, they take away our peace of mind, and that is why this is very important, and we should carry out this monitoring, and there is a clear warnings during this time. So, if you want to meditate during this time, it is. very useful and very very beneficial to the persons and nowadays what is happening everybody is working till midnight 12 o'clock 1 o'clock 2 o'clock and then when you have to get up at 3 o'clock you are trying to sleep and you sleep till 8 o'clock 9 o'clock in that way your whole cycle is disturbed and you are getting these pro issues so you should change your sleeping pattern and it should be dependent on uh, the chrono medicine there is one more thing which i would like to discuss for our doctors when we were students we have been taught how to write the prescription and we were writing rx before writing a prescription this rx is a greek word meaning the why take down take down means that i am writing this prescription in your name in the name of the god and i am i am only implementer executor you are the healer but today we have forgotten this term and we are we are writing advised that means we are the creator and no human being is able to uh, be a healer he can only help in the healing how the religions are developed this is another aspect why religions are developed anybody any pagamba pagamba rishi muni speaker thinker writer all those people when they become enlightened they understood the real essence of life that that we cannot live successfully and happy Until unless we develop these seven virtues, soul virtues in our life, then they describe in different different books. For example, in Bible they describe in the Christianity, in the Quran uh, they describe in the in the Muslims, the Hindus, Ved, uh, Puran, Upanishad, Gita, Bhagavad, Mahabharat, and in and Guru Nanak Sahab only five hundred five hundred years back in Guru Nanak Sahab in in both both the teachings in Mahavir teaching Jains everywhere this has been taught. that we have to follow these virtues but we were not able to understand how to follow it that's why there were so many karm kan uh, they were included in this uh, in these rituals were added and we understood only rituals we started following rituals and forgetting the real essence of life essence the meaning of life and that's how we have deteriorated and we are still deteriorating day and night i would like to explain you a wonderful thing you you will be uh, the greed is the
basic cause of sorrow of any individual, any society, any nation or the whole world. And COVID-19 is a classical example of a greed. It was developed by human beings. I will not claim who has developed it, why it has developed, but it was it was developed by one country and it was spread by another country. And ultimately, they thought when they created it, that we will create a bomb of COVID-19 and will spread wherever we want to destroy this immunity. But ultimately, what happened? The whole universe, whole world, they suffered from the COVID-19 and millions of people have died because of this thing and it indicated and has not benefited anybody. Whosoever has made it, whosoever has spread it, ultimately all of them suffered and, and millions of people have died with this COVID-19. Therefore, the greed and the lust never makes anybody happy or anybody rich. So, we have to change our thinking process. We have to uh, develop the, the selflessness for others. Global warming is another feature which is happening only because of our greed. Nobody, nobody wants that he should restrain their desires and we are destroying the natural resources and the every day because of this warming, this uh, sea level is increasing and to this extent that very shortly the some part of the uh, earth may some get submerged and natural calamities you are seeing every day they are coming, they all are coming because of our greed. We don't want to restrict ourselves, then we have understood the disease, we have diagnosed the disease, now we should know how to treat it and how to come out of this crisis and the condition and the treatment is the reconditioning of our subconscious mind. Whatever I have discussed this evening, it has gone to your conscious mind only. It has not gone to your subconscious mind or unconscious mind. And we have to rewrite the subconscious mind, the writings which are there, they are all of evil thoughts. We have to remove them and we have to write the right thoughts in the subconscious mind. And this can happen in two ways. How we learn the medicine? We have learned it, we have studied it, repeated it again and again and again and all of them have gone into your subconscious mind. I can give you another example. How we learn driving? In the driving, what happens? We learn uh, in, for, for the first time when we sit on the driving seat, then we are very fearful. Sometimes we press the clutch, we uh, press the accelerator, sometimes the brake, and we are not coordinated. Ultimately, we learn for a few months, and ultimately, this training goes into subconscious mind. Now, when we sit in the driving seat, it is, it is not driving it. It is subconsciously we are driving. In the same manner, when the good virtues, what we are talking, the seven virtues, when we are imbibing in our subconscious mind, then only we can make ourselves perfect. And when we it goes into subconscious mind, then only we will become happy and blissful and peaceful. Our mind thinks as per our past experiences. In meditation, we voluntarily direct mind to think in the right direction and we rewrite positive new memories. Our mind can think one thing at a time when we, it is a very specific property, I would like to emphasize this again. The mind has got a very special feature that it can think one thought at a time. We cannot think two thoughts at a time, but these thoughts are so fast that we are not able to discriminate, differentiate between one thought to another and in one minute time we nearly develop 25 to 40 thoughts and in one day there are nearly 70,000 thoughts per day. You can imagine what will be the condition of our, our brain and mind. It is so uh, flooded with the thoughts and we are not able to dis discriminate, we are not able to make any good decisions and that is the reason we are going in such a bad situation. How to correct it? We willingly direct our concentrate our mind in a particular direction, preventing propagation of negative thoughts and thus inculcating positive thoughts in our mind. And immediately after meditation, we have a clear voice and protective genes are turned on, they are upregulated, and disease causing genes are turned off, thus decreasing stress. And there are total 108 types of meditations and uh, out of the few I will discuss. 
these meditations, there is another property of the mind which we use in the meditation. They are very good. God has given so many good properties to us. There is another good quality of the, our mind is that it cannot differentiate between reality and imagination. Whatever comes to my mind, we treat it as a reality. And the classical example is the sleep, uh, the dreams in the sleep, during sleeps. During sleep, I, we are sleeping comfortably. The dreams are coming in the mind. But our body is reacting in the same manner as they are reality, as they are real. And we get up in the middle of the night with, with, the, uh, uh, with the fearful thing that suppose some accident has happened in the, in the dreams. So, some air crash has happened. And we get up, oh, I have died. But when you get up, then you feel, no, 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 I am lying comfortably. There is there's nothing, no crash has happened. That is the imagination. Your mind has imagined it. But the whole body is reacted as it has happened in reality. So this is the feature which we use positively. When we learn to meditate, we tell our mind that you are not having jealousy, you are not having hatred, you are not having anger. These are not your virtues. Your virtues is peacefulness, blissfulness, happy and that is your quality. And, and when we remind our mind, subconscious mind again and again, again and again, there are various methods by which this, this thing has been trained, then we can clear all the past memories and can write the, willing, the memories which are willfully and willingly and which we need to keep us healthy and happy and wealthy. Wealth automatically comes. Actually, this lust for the wealth is making all the trouble. They are the real, uh, real problem suitors. When you run behind the money, money will never come to you. Even if the money will come, it will bring all the stresses in your life. But when you run behind your, your own virtues, then money also follows. So now with this lesson, we have understood that we have to live a proper life which is the guided by Almighty Supreme God to us. And today we have understood there are 108 types of meditation. Now one of the simplest meditation to tell you so that you can include your, in your day-to-day -day behavior, day-to-day -day working so that you can improve without doing much activity. One is, simplest way is that you should live a meditative life. What does this mean? Meditative life means that you should be living in the present. Suppose you are taking a tea. What you do when you eat a food or when you take a bath? What you do? Actually, you are taking tea or you are taking a food or you are taking a bath, but you are not there. Your hands are working uh, automatically. You are putting a glass on yourself, you're putting a water on yourself or you are standing below the shower and you are taking bath. That's all. But you are thinking you have to go at 10 o'clock in the, in the clinic and you have to attend this patient or that patient. You have to do this activity or that activity. And this is the problem, that problem. All those things are coming in your mind. But you are not there in your washroom. When you are drinking, eating, you are not there in the food. So what you should do, all the time, you should remember, suppose you are taking a tea, you take a tea, see, see the cup. Take up to the lips. See what is going. Keep your mind here only in the tea. Take a sip. You experience the taste of the tea, experience the, uh, the heat of the tea and wherever it goes, it is going inside the esophagus, oral cavity, esophagus, and stomach. Everywhere you should feel. That means during this time, you are there. That means you are not propagating the thoughts, other thoughts. Other thoughts which are, which are negative in nature, you are stopping them. Or simply you have, you are living a meditative life. This is known as meditative lifestyle. And in this, if you just be little thankful to the Almighty God, who has given this opportunity to get these things in your hands, in a tea or a food or, a, or anything for your life. Just have a gratitude for the God and be present there. That will make you most perfect and happy person. The gratitude increases the parasympathetic activity in the body. Gratitude increases harmony system in the, in the harmony. This is the scientific facts which we have forgotten. So we should be having gratitude for the Almighty God and we should be aware of whatever I am doing. And that is the simplest meditative lifestyle. And second, simplest meditation which you can do yourself without teaching many serious things. There are various things and very deep 
uh, meditative uh, features, but which you can learn later on if you need. But these two things you should understand. One is a meditative lifestyle throughout the day. Number two, having awareness of your breath. Breath is the thing which remain with you throughout your life till you are uh, alive. You just watch your breath. Watch your breath, how it is going, how it is coming out, where it is touching, what is the, whether it is hot or cold, whatever the features of the, of the breath, you just keep monitoring that. It will keep your mind engaged there only. It will not go here and there and will not create the negative thoughts. That's how this helps. And there are all the meditations are there. You can follow anyone. Doesn't make any difference. But you follow something and that is going to make you happy. Otherwise, there is nothing on this earth which can keep you happy. And happiness is our desire, is the ultimate. This uh, watching the breath is known as uh, mindful meditation. It is very popular in the West. But it is a very basic type of meditation. It is not a very, uh, this is the awareness of thought. But if you are reading, then you should go to remain there. And that is how, now last, I will give you the small tips about the take home message. The revitalize the practice of Rx. You all are doctors. You should know how to write the prescription. Change your sleep pattern, diet and lifestyle. Lifestyle is not that what we teach our patients. Lifestyle means life is what is life? Life is our soul. And soul has got seven virtues. We should uh, modify our thought process. That is the lifestyle modification. Not doing yoga and not doing exercise or, or gym. That is not lifestyle modification. And, and meditation prevents and cures metabolic syndrome, can prevent diseases like uh, bacterial and viral diseases and cancer. And meditation also prevents bacterial and viral infections by activating the immune system. So in that way, it is ultimate desire of our body, which we are not giving it. Our, my submission is that we all should change our lifestyle. We should change not only our lifestyle but our patients' lifestyle so that we can modify their life and can give them a better life. Thank you very much. I hope I've been able to uh, give you sufficient uh, explanation for the soul curry and today's recipe must be a nice recipe which uh, will definitely, I hope that will change your life. And if there are any questions in this regard, I'll be very happy to uh, respond to them.